Jason of Houston is presented to you by Bad and Bougie Entertainment. I'm your host, Miss Nikki. We have our host, Kanisha Gaston. And today we have the beautiful Houston realtor, Felicity Moreno. How you doing, Felicity? Hi, hi. That's good. That's good. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. So we want to ask you, what made you go into real estate? And just give us a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, um, um, I'm 23 years old. Um, I'm a single mom. Um, what made me get into real estate was basically after high school, um, I was just talking with a friend, like, what should I do now? Um, and he was just giving ideas, like, maybe you should apply here, apply there. And he mm -hmm. builds houses. So he's like, oh, maybe, mm -hmm. or maybe get your real, real estate license. Like, it was just like so... He just threw it out there. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, hmm, maybe I should. And so um, I decided to enroll myself in class. And, um, and yeah, that's basically, it was just that simple. How, um, how, how, how long did you have to go and how hard was it to get your license? Was it something that you started and you was like, I, I don't want to do this? So was mm -hmm. it? Well, um, the classes only take about six weeks, but mm -hmm. for me, um, I was so, like I said, I was fresh out of high school, so I was like, not, I didn't really care that much, mm -hmm. you know, about it, and so it really took me a couple years, when it really only takes six weeks, mm -hmm. but I was just so, like, indecisive, um, so yeah. Yeah, so basically, you're saying, because I wasn't committed, Yeah. so you just will mess with it off and on. Yeah, like I would pay for a class and then not even go or just, I just didn't really care that much until like COVID hit. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I, there was really nothing much to do. So then you started taking the classes. Yeah. So what made you get serious about the career? Because I was like, I need something like, for real. I need something like legit, basically. Yeah. yeah. So um, we'll just back up a little bit because I know you used to be a rapper. And yeah. so just tell us a little bit about rapping and then what made you, is that just something, you, a phase you were going through? Or? Mm -hmm. Well, I actually like music. I mean, I didn't start like writing or anything until, until what year was that that I met you? Like that year, whatever year that was. 2019. Like, 2019. That's when I wrote my first song. Um, and I just like, I just went to the studio and I was like, oh, this sounds good. So, and it felt good. It felt good doing it. Um, Cause I've always been a writer, but I've never like, you know, put it to a beat. Mm -hmm. I just wrote like my feelings and everything. And so um, I really, I really liked it. So that's what got me um, doing it. And uh, what else did you have? Yeah, that's pretty much. And then she came and she, uh, she was on the show. Mm -hmm. I think that was your first show, and she yeah. killed it. <laughs> yeah. So. How did you feel on stage? I was so scared. Oh my god, I was so scared. Um, I had brought, I think, one of my friends on. I brought two of my friends there with me. When I think I had one of my friends get on stage with me because she's like, she's like my hype man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I'm so glad I did it though. Like at the moment, I was scared, but looking back, like that was like, I, I really have it. those pictures. Uh huh. So do you think that that time on the stage, mm -hmm. getting to learn yourself as a rapper mm -hmm. is helping you in your real estate now? Um, Kind of. I feel like that experience, basically, like, since I was so scared, because I'm naturally a shy person. I don't know if you mm -hmm. can tell. But <laughs> um, it made me, like, kind of just want to just do it anyways, even though I'm scared. Like, just why not, you know? Like, even with posting it on my social media that I was going to be performing, I was kind of nervous because I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what they're going to say. <laughs> yeah, cause she, well, she, when she came people. out, she came out when she posted, she, um, because she came out and she was performing for big people, like, mm -hmm. so, and then, like, Jeff Shelley, Houston comedian, he, um, uh, he, um, he hosted this show, so, of course, he's a mm -hmm. comedian, and, you know, he was like, she's going to win this show already, you know, so, it was, That's we had, a good it, it was on the Father's yeah. Day, and, it was oh, yeah. pouring down raining, but yeah, so we had a good time and she mm -hmm. she she killed it. I think she did like two or three songs too. I think two. Two songs. Two songs. Yeah. yeah. So how is it as a, a single mom? Um 
and you know being a rapper and and you know now into real estate so uh, is, is being a rapper something that you would like your son to do or uh, does he like music mm -hmm. yeah he likes music um he's he's only five but mm -hmm. if you like walk past past his room and hear the list, music he listens to you would think it's a grown man man in there just from what he likes to listen to but um I mean, if he wanted to become a rapper, I mean, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't mind it. I would support him. Yeah. You know, but I'm not going to push him into that. I just want him to do whatever he wants to do. Um, but yeah, and even though it's been a while, like when you had called me, I was like, I'm focused on real estate right now. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like I just like put that behind me, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, I was just trying to get things in order, but. I still, you know, want to follow that. Okay. Well, I'm still in the entertainment business. Yeah. We have a, a three-day event coming up, actually, mm -hmm. July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. We have two events, and then we have the car show coming up. So mm -hmm. you're more than welcome mm -hmm. to be a part of it and uh, more than welcome to perform at mm -hmm. the car show. And we have two uh, album release parties. Uh, so what other career paths have you journeyed into before you decided to go to real estate? And do you believe that those career paths can help you uh, when you're dealing with clients and when you're trying to sell? Mm. Well, um, I mean, the only, I guess, real careers that I've been in, um, I mean, I used to work at the prison, uh, which shocks a lot of people. I don't know why. I was like 19 years old working there. And um, oh wow, <laughs> yeah. So that was that was crazy. Um, that was a crazy experience, but I I liked it though. Um, but I think dealing with, you know, those men in there, they don't care. They just treat you any type of way. So I think that like helped me like not care what mm -hmm. like what a man has to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You learn to ignore, uh, really ignore some of the um ignorant things uh ignorant mentality uh because some of the uh inmates will say things to yeah. what they do is they say things to either reel you in or fill you out to see whether or not you're gonna catch on to mm -hmm. uh catch on yeah. or catch out pretty so much so you, you can take that and what you can do is if you have disgruntled clients or if you mm -hmm. have individuals that's hard to deal with uh it should be able to have thick skin because I know in real estate you yeah. should you, you still got to have thick skin to accept the nose to accept mm -hmm. I don't think I can find this or this isn't the type so mm -hmm. how, how did you um, feel once you graduated and they say you you went and took the test my real estate test mm -hmm. well at first I, I felt like three times I was um because at first I was like I really didn't put that much effort in. So the first time I was like, all right, well now I'm gonna focus. And then the second time I was like, oh my God. And the third time I was just crying and I had to retake another class because I feel like you kept going. Yeah, I kept going. And my grandma, um, you know, she helped me, she gave me support. Cause my uncle, he was like, maybe you should just try nursing or something. Like they make good <laughs> money. I was like, mm, that's not what I want to do. And um, yeah, they pushed me. And I, I got it done. Well, good for you. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Because many people, when they hear, uh, and, and this is good, because you're going to mm -hmm. inspire other women that may be going through the same thing, mm -hmm. to, to know that if I fail, I just dust myself back out, got back in the saddle, mm -hmm. and I continue to do it until I completed it. So you said three times? Yeah, it took me three times. And what's crazy is the second time, um, because on the paper they give you, like, they give you the results for your mm -hmm. test. And on there, I say pass or fail. And so when I knew I failed, I just like bought it up and threw it away because I was just mad. But then the second time I looked at it and I seen I only failed like by two points. And I was oh, like, wow. oh my God, like, you know, I would have, I didn't know that. So, right. But yeah, I'm glad I didn't give up though. I'm glad you didn't either. Yeah. Glad. We'll go into commercial and we'll come back with more on the real estate with Felicity. Welcome 
back to Boss Women in Houston. We're just going to continue to talk to the lovely Miss Felicity. Mm -hmm. So, Felicity, can you share with us a little bit more about uh, real estate and the business? Mm -hmm. Well, real estate, I mean, it's not what you see on TV, but it's a real, um, what's it called, lucrative uh, occupation. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, so I've, I've been licensed since July. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm not, I, I haven't had that much experience, but so far I really like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how do they find, a, is someone finding the houses for you and then you go and show the houses and or they contact you? Or actually, how can... Um, how can we con how can someone that's looking for a home contact you? We forgot to ask you that when you came on. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, my Instagram, my Instagram, my Facebook, um, it's all Felicity Felicity Moreno, Felicity Rose Moreno. Um, but yeah, when a client is looking for a home, usually like they'll message me like, Hey, like I need a house or I need an apartment. Um, you just have to pretty much know your budget. Uh, well, I would pretty much calculate it for you because sometimes people, they think mm -hmm. they can afford this, but they really can't. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, yeah, so basically you would just need to get pre-approved for, like, let's say someone's looking for a house. Mm -hmm. Before I even start working with you, you have to get pre-approved. Like, mm -hmm. that's with any realtor. That's mm -hmm. what we're trying to do. You have to get pre-approved first. Mm -hmm. And then we go start looking at houses. Okay, so they have a certain uh, pre-approval and then a certain... A uh, house range, like a, um, say for instance, when they get pre-approved, is it like they have the uh, debt to income ratio? Is yeah, well, basically, with the on my pre-approval pre letter, it says how much they can afford. Like they go by like their, you know, their jobs and credit. Um, and so on that letter, it'll say you can only afford like up to let's say like a four hundred thousand dollar house. Mm -hmm. So then we'll go look at 400 and under. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how do you strategically pick the home for them? Is it from the list that they give you? Or you say, okay, as a realtor, I'm trying to help you with the financials so you can get mm -hmm. the best buck out of your money. Yeah. Uh, so how do you go about that strategically? Um, well, basically, I would just go online because, you know, realtors, we have a system called the MLS where only we can look at. Well, I guess. You guys can too, but we can see more information and we right. can see what's fresh on the market, um, if it's even worth it, you know, all that stuff. So basically, if someone's looking for a house, um, I'll just make a list for them. I'll ask them, you know, how many bedrooms, what area do you like? I'll make a list for them. Um, and then I'll even tell them, like, if you see any houses you like, send it to me. We go see it if you want to. But um, I try to... Because, you know, a lot of times clients, when they see a house, it's like they love it. And, like, they already, when you walk in, it's like they already picture themselves in the house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is my bedroom. Yeah. This is my furniture. I'm going to put the couch right there. Yeah. yeah but um, it's just the way it is right now is just, like, you really just can't get your hopes up too high. Like, really, really can't. Because people are outbidding each other, like, big time. So how do you feel when you have to tell um, a client that they don't qualify? Well, um, I mean, it's just, I don't feel, I just say it. I mean, <laughs> because that is how it is. It's just so we won't waste each other's time. You yeah. Know? I, like, I don't want to take you to a $400,000 home if you can only afford, like, $120,000. Mm -hmm. You know? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm not going to be rude about it. It's just mm -hmm. we can't waste our time. Yeah. Have you made any contracts since you yeah real estate? Yeah, I have. Um, actually, just sold a house on. Um, what was that? All right. Last month or something. Thank you. Thank you. Was that your first? Yeah, my first selling the house. Yeah. Oh, oh, tell us a little bit about that process for yeah. you. Oh my God. In the in the the life of Felicity, tell <laughs> yes. us about that process. Well, that was a complicated one because my clients they wanted. Um, I mean. They wanted to downsize because all, all their kids are out the house and all that. So they wanted to downsize. And so I was pretty much taking some of these houses in their price range, and they just kept getting outbid every mm. single time. Mm. Outbid every single time. Um, so it was at a point where I was like, okay, maybe we should just look at some new houses, like some brand new construction homes. And so we went, and um, 
they they really liked it. They really liked it. So it it took about um yeah, it took about a month. Usually it takes about a month for like from when you, we make the offer, you know, do the contract to when they get their keys. Okay. So, oh, okay. okay. Yeah, it takes about thirty days. So that 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 was so you said okay, we already have these positions home already. Mm-hmm. So let's look at a new build. Yeah. And they got a new build. Yeah. Because they, they just yeah. Yeah, because they were just getting out of bed mm-hmm. every time. That, that was that, that was, was a good smart. strategy. Yeah, that was yeah. a good strategy. Yeah. That and then smart. probably more exciting for them because they're the brand the brand new owners and they're the first owners. Of the yeah, house. and that's how I feel. Like some people don't care. Like when they buy a house, some people don't mind if it's old. I know when I buy a house, mm-hmm. I want it to be brand new. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's just me though. Yeah, but it doesn't really matter. So for the new person that's thinking about a career in in real estate, mm-hmm. how would you tell them about the um, commission, the the pay? How does that work? We don't get paid like weekly or biweekly or any of that. We get paid only commission. So when we make a sale or we lease a home or an apartment, we get commission based off that. Yeah. Based off the amount of the sale. Yeah, the amount. Or the agreed yeah. contract. Okay. Yeah. So every every like you know, every house, every transaction is different. Right. And that's something that a uh, uh, individual going into the field needs to know that mm-hmm. they don't because a lot of people may believe because I'm signed on with this real estate company that yeah. I get paid weekly. But in reality, you get paid on the commission only. Commission only. Commission only. Yeah, and like for some agents, I mean, some agents um, come in and they'll they'll do pretty good for the first year, but most of the time they don't. I think the percentage of a, uh, of agents who quit is like eighty in the first year. Wow. Eighty percent of agents, or seventy five or something, is it's because it's hard. Yeah, so, and it's like it just takes time to you know find clientele. You know. Well, um. A question I have is like um, with the pandemic coming and everything being so crazy with the pandemic, did that have an effect on the market, the housing market? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't a realtor at that time. I didn't become a realtor afterwards. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't, from what the other agents say, it didn't really affect that. Oh. And that's why I really wanted to do it because everything else is affected. Mm-hmm. But real estate, like people still need a place to live. You know? Oh, okay. Because I thought people were losing homes. That's why I asked that question. I thought like people were losing homes when during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Well, it was a lot of. Uh, I mean, like I said, I wasn't a realtor at that time, but I know it was a lot of uh, what it's called, like assistance and like forgiveness. Help. Yeah, help. Oh, forgiveness with, with homeowners. Oh, yeah, okay. Right, with homeowners. Oh, okay. They give them a length of time before they and payment pay. plans. I think. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because that nice. that's, that, that's almost like a natural disaster. If yeah. People lose homes. Yeah. So, okay. With that being said, what, um, what, <clears throat> like, I know they have homes in flood districts and stuff. Mm-hmm. How does that affect, like, people buying homes? Um, I know I lived in a flood district, and when I lived in Rocheron, and when we had Hurricane Ike, um, Ooh, which bad. something I didn't know. We didn't have water. All of that is uh, on electric. So when we didn't have water, uh, when the water, when the electricity went off, we didn't have water because that that was an electric pump. Mm. So how does that affect people? That's like, um, how, I guess, how would that affect people that's buying homes? Do they know? Um, do they understand what the difference, like the flood district? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The different little. Yeah. Every. Well, every agent is supposed to, you know, get that information from the, the sellers. Um, you're supposed to let them know everything, you know, because um, you're supposed to be in the supposed to work in the best interest of your client. Mm-hmm. Right? It's not even about the money. Like you're like, you know, you don't want to set them up. Yeah. Right? But yeah. some agents, you know, there's there's law set in place. So yeah. sometimes if something happens like that, they can sue them. Yeah. But um, that's why we're trained to get each d- disclosure. Even when someone, even when a seller is selling their home, they're supposed to list like everything that's wrong with it. Like, right. the roof is this is happening, or mm-hmm. the floor this is happening. Like, you're supposed to get all that information and give it to the buyer. Yeah, because I know living, especially by the Braves Bio, because I had a situation you, when the people on the Braves Bio. So I guess trying to buy, well, they're building them up a little yeah. higher. So is that an issue? With, you know, purchasing homes. Um, Telling them about natural disaster areas and uh, 
you know, high crime areas and uh, where the good schools are. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, when it comes to like, you know, the flooding, um, I would just be honest with them and be like, hey, like, you know, this this can happen. Mm -hmm. Like, are you prepared for that? Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it will, but it can. Yeah. So, and it's up to, up to them. Because I know a lot of people like the older homes in Maryland, but they um it floods so bad by the brains, yeah, by does. your... Yeah. So I, I know that uh, some real estate agents actually work as the, the for the buyer and for the seller. Mm -hmm. So how do that work for individuals say, I'm trying to sell my home mm -hmm. or you work for a particular person that they're trying to buy the home, but you're also an agent for the seller? Is that possible? Like, uh, like two random people? Like... Like, let's say you want to buy a home, you want she's selling the home, and you want to buy it. Right. And you're the real estate agent for the, both. Uh-huh. I mean, um, I can be the buyer or the seller. Um, I, the best, uh, what's it called? The best, what's it called? The best one to be, mm -hmm. I would say, is the, um, uh, the seller mm -hmm. agent. Mm -hmm. Because it's a seller's market. Mm -hmm. So buying a home, like I said, you're going to get it outbid and all that for mm -hmm. a while. Uh, but for a seller, it's like someone's going to buy it. You know, you already know that. But, um, but yeah. How long can they stay on the market before they take it off the market or, or is it until it's somebody true. buy it? Um, well, usually they, they don't last like three days. But, oh, um, okay. Yeah, but if something's wrong with it, they'll last a while. And I think... um. I forgot how long the agent will have the home for. Um, I don't know. But really, yeah. you can just keep uploading, uploading. But if, it, if it's on the market that long, like, it's a reason why. And yeah, so that's what I was asking. Because sometimes when I go on hair, I see, oh, it's been on there for 180 days. Something's wrong with it. Yeah. So you as the realtor, will you mm -hmm. talk to the, the, one, the seller and say, hey, let's reevaluate the pricing. Let's try to stage it. Let's try to do what we can and try to get it sold. Mm -hmm. Would you try to talk to them? Yeah, I would. Um, I mean, I pretty much do try to do whatever they want. But you know, with, with sellers, a lot of times they they'll think their house is worth this, but it's not even worth that. You know, because it's their home, so they want to get the the most the they can. It, yeah. Right. So sometimes I think that's the only annoying part where um, you know, when they're just they're just so stuck on that. You know. Okay. We'll go into commercial and we'll come back with more on the real estate with Felicity. You know I can sue you, right? This lady is looking at us. Do not make eye contact. Do not. Do not look up. I'm hungry, so what's going to do about this? At least she might be trying to take our water. I'm not sure. Uh, but, oh. You want some chicken? Yeah, I'm down for that. Should we call the police? We're going to call somebody. Go on, both close parts of the call chat. I see it don't Is look. She doing the same when accidents happen, always keep a level head and just call Chad. He's got you covered. We have the beautiful Houston realtor. Felicity Monroe, and we're learning more about how to uh, purchase homes and the ins and outs of purchasing homes. So, um, Felicity, what would you recommend, because you said you're 23, mm -hmm. what would you recommend to someone else um, your age um, uh, how, uh, to purchase homes? Because 23 is young, and it's you amazing. have to be on the, oh. yeah, the, you have to be very mature and driven and, and uh, dedicated, mm -hmm. you know, to something like real estate. That's really big. Yeah. I mean, um, I feel like I'm 23, but I'm only getting older, like, every single day. So it feels like, yeah. like I said, I started this journey at 19, and I just became a realtor at 22. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I feel like, uh, you know, when we're young, I know I'm young still, but mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of us, people my age, we get caught up in just like the day to, yeah, I got time, the day to day life, like, especially I come from the nightlife. I don't know if you yeah. guys know that. Mm -hmm. So fast money every day. And it's like, but you have to focus, like I said, when COVID hit, 
all that stopped. Mm-hmm. So I had to focus, like, what do I really want for my life? Like, you know, mm-hmm. like I have a child. I want to set, you know, I want to prepare. Goals and boundaries right. and yeah, so values. I would, yeah, so I would just say, like, do it. Like, why not? Mm-hmm. You're not doing nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. So what are your future plans? Where do you see real estate taking you? What are your goals, mm-hmm. mission? <laughs> What is Felicity going to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, in four years, I get to become a broker. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, you have to be an agent for four years. Um, so I'm going to become a broker, and then I can hire my own agents. And then, oh, oh, yeah. So I've been thinking of names, like what I'm going to call it, but I don't know yet. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. A company you already that have- grows. Yeah. So, yeah. so you already have a plan, and so that's good. And and the thing is, with you being 23, you'll still be in your 20s mm-hmm. when you get your broker's license. 27. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So when you name it, name it a company <laughs> that can grow with you, mm-hmm. not yeah. something that will confine you to one um one niche. Mm-hmm. You want to be able to expand a lot of branches off of that one solid yeah. foundation. So make sure that with the name has to be something that if you want to do a construction company under you, it could still be that name. If you want to do mm-hmm. hire real estates under you and have an independent contractors working for you, basically that's what they are. Yeah. You you make sure that that name is something that the branches can grow off of. Yeah. And also like I want to get into like different avenues of real estate. Like mm-hmm. I want to learn how to build, you know, like oh, build right, your empire. Right, right. One day. Exactly. Yeah. Or build you know, your empire. All types of stuff. And, um, you know, I want to do everything. Build your empire. Why That's not? Good. Yeah. Why not? And not only, I think globally. So not only Texas. Yeah. I mean, I would want to. Dominate the other states. Yeah. And that's really like, you asked about my son, like, would I want him to become a rapper or whatever? I would, what I want is for him to, you know, come join me. Join right. you, yeah. You know, Make it what a, I'm a doing. company. I mean, rent. no matter what, like, he can do whatever. But right. um, that's that's the big goal. Real estate is where it's at. And you setting a legacy for him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he can, you know, set it for his kids right. in the future. Well, that's, that's yeah, that, that's cool. That's cool. So um, are you in competition with other companies or other uh Real estate agents. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna watch this, but um, oh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really care though. But um, I know when I first joined my brokerage because I'm with Coldwell Banker. Mm-hmm. Um, when I first joined my brokerage, uh, I was just so happy, ready to learn this and learn that, and um, you know, getting to know the other agents. But it's like. Not everybody's just really. I'm. I, I'm. I want to become friends. I want to learn. Like you mm-hmm. teach me something, I teach you something. Mm-hmm. But instead, a few of them were looking at me. I guess like I guess they could see my potential or something. Yeah, I don't it know. Became what it a threat, was. maybe. Yeah, I became a threat, and I don't see why. Like I'm not that type of person. Like we can do it together. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, it's life. That's how some people are. Yeah. So that's part, and you know, I think that's probably with any job. Yeah. Um, but you know, um, I take it like this because it's pretty much the same. Uh, working for TDC, you when you're a mentor or you have to train somebody, um, I've worked with people that trained me, and I became a little bit better at what they were doing, mm. and is um. One of the ladies that trained me, I ended up uh, working in a position, and she was taken out of the position, the control figure. So she um, she had a problem with that. But I've I've trained people that went on to be sergeants and lieutenants, and you know before me. But I had I wanted to wait till my kids grew, you know, got grown before I, you know, advanced. So it was, but to me. It, they were a product of me teaching them, so I didn't have a problem. So everybody, you know, don't have that mindset. So instead of, you know what I'm saying, but instead of being mm-hmm. jealous and envious and hateful, they should be like, oh, I mentored that person, or oh, I trained that person, but everybody doesn't think like that. Yeah. So what would you do 
based on the situation that you find yourself in. Mm. Uh, I've shared, I've, I've been in a situation to where you can be an unintentional threat Mm -hmm. uh, to people. So what would you say in the positions that you in mm -hmm. that will keep you developing, that will yeah. keep you growing? Uh, would you say that I will keep learning? I will put myself out there. I will make, I become visible. There's so mm -hmm. many aspects. I just don't want you from me sitting here. I just don't want you to get caught up on what they're not doing mm -hmm. and get caught up on what you need to do Yeah, because you're beautiful. Mm -hmm. You're young. You have a lot of time on, on and your and hands to do it and a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. And that could be the threat. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So what are you going to do to keep advancing yourself so you can always continue to grow to that next level? Mm -hmm. um, Something to think about. Yeah. Um, I guess what I want to do is just really just connect with the right people. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. at the end of the day, it's not like, I mean, people say, Oh, I did it by myself, I did it by myself. But it really takes a good a team. A team, yes. yeah. Yeah, and that's really what I want. You know, I want to be a part of a team or create a team, you know, um, get with the right people who are not jealous, who, you know, who all want to see each other eat and grow. Mm -hmm. Like, I wish I had that now. I wish I could have, like, a friend that does this, a friend does that, and we're, like, we all help each other. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, you, you could fix her credit so I could. You can buy this house. There next you year. go. There you go. That's yeah. it. And That's not, not only that, they don't even have to have a connection with the market mm -hmm. because word of mouth. It sells, right? Mm -hmm. So you, it can basically be, I'm connected with somebody that's doing shoes. Why? Because eventually that person may need a shoe store. Exactly. And so that, that connection, when you said it, connect with the right people, mm -hmm. it's networking. Yeah. Networking. And real estate is networking. Yeah. Um, that's that's really what it is, networking. I mean, um, that's that's just what I'm trying to do. Yeah, construction, right. uh, banking, credit repair. All of that works hand in hand together. Mm -hmm. So that's very smart. That's very smart. Um, mm -hmm. So and maybe you should forward. start posting it like on uh, on your social media, and then you know I have your you know your page on social media, and even like when I see you post and stuff, I'll even post it you know on my page. So you know you know when, whenever I see you. Something come across, I'll even, you know, post it on some of my pages or whatever it. and share it. Because yeah. everybody looks for a home. Mm -hmm. You know, I always tell people, listen, I can't rent every day and make somebody rich. I got to have something that's my own, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so everyone is thinking about it at one point of time mm -hmm. about a home. Mm -hmm. So it's that push, that information, that education that you can educate people with mm -hmm. that will get them gravitating towards you because they're going to be like, man, she know her stuff. Mm -hmm. She yeah. in this market. Mm -hmm. Let me go get it. And, and I think your young. age, TikTok mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah. Instagram yeah. will be like A1. <laughs> and you'll be surprised at people that's in California that's trying to move to Texas and call you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I do want to get on TikTok. I expand my Tech, mind. Uh, uh, California, sorry. probably Atlanta. Yeah. Because some of the laws are yeah. similar, believe it or not. Because I, I do business law. Uh -huh. So some of the laws are similar from other states that you may be dealing with. And so it'll be an easy transition for somebody else to come mm -hmm. uh, from another state to try to get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I've actually had somebody from Atlanta. I don't know how, like, I guess. Atlanta is similar. They posted, they posted, I'm looking for a realtor. I don't even know them. And I guess somebody, a random follower, yes. referred them to me. Yes. And yeah, it was crazy. And keep contact. Um, so how do you keep contact with the client? So say, for instance, I am a client mm -hmm. and I'm saying, hey, I need a house. I'm trying to get a house. How would you keep in contact with me to keep me engaged and keep me excited about getting a house? <laughs> what, what would it be the steps that you would do? Cause this make, is for somebody that don't know. Or make something yeah. or make you stay and to refer somebody else. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm the type of agent, you know, I'll be texting you um, or calling you, whatever you prefer. No, I don't want to be a bugaboo. Right. But, um, you know, sometimes some, sometimes in the um, like the transaction, sometimes an agent and their client will actually become friends because, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, they're putting so much trust in them. You know everything. To, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I just try to be respectful, but um, I don't like hold your hand at the same time, though. Yeah. You know, yeah. So you can feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Well, I will need you to be comfortable because you got yeah. my 
social, you have my right. financial well, I don't get... information. <laughs> well, with the paperwork, you know, you got my financial yeah, information. I'm giving it, I'm turning it over to you so you can give it to whoever you need to give yeah. it to. So that's that's a level of trust that some some uh family members don't, don't have. even have. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's um it's real what's where like it's a really important, like so I just try not to, you know, mess anything up or overdo anything. Right. So what are you doing for advertising for yourself? Um Pretty much in social media, but honestly, even that, I need to step up, um, show up to events honest. like uh, real estate events. When GMT is having something, throwing mm -hmm. the plug back and mm -hmm. bad and music, yeah, and bougie, bougie is having something, show up to those events and be yeah. present and visible. Um, when when they're doing something like the car show that's coming up mm -hmm. and and uh, radio guests, you know, ass and stuff like that. That's yeah. that'll help put you out there. Yeah, I need to start doing that. Um going to events and mingling. Mm -hmm. Um it is for some reason like when people meet me in person, it's like they don't believe I'm a realtor. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I'm like I am until they get on my social media or Google me. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Become your walking canvas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Become you. I'm I'm proud of you. I am yeah, truly I proud of you. Mm -hmm. At 23, first of all, that you you started at 19 and mm -hmm. you continue to finish it until you at, at 22. It doesn't matter yeah. how long it takes you to to finish something as long as you finish. Yeah. So I'm proud of you and I see the great possibilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm 53 and I'm like, you know, this is something I'm literally I want to <laughs> get into it. You know, I was that's why I was like, how long does it take? So. Yeah, it's only six weeks. So yeah, I think everybody. I mean, why not? Why not just at least have it under your belt? Okay. So do you have to go to a board to get the license, or what do you have to do? Or is it just an exam? Well, you have to find a school. Um, I went to Champion School of Real Estate. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, it was that simple. Like I went out. They have like online classes, and they have in person, and um, they make it real easy for you. And you just take like, what, like a class, like, because it's six classes, it's six classes. That's why I say six weeks. You can do one class a week. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's super simple. It's just, it's hard though. Mm -hmm. You know, it's and hard. And the test is a computer test? Yeah. It's a computer test. Okay. Well, good luck with your journey and your endeavors yes. in mm -hmm. real estate. And we wish you the best. And we really want you to get your broker's license. And let us know. <laughs> let us know. Thank you. No. Right. Well, thank you, Felicity Moreau, for joining Boss Women of Houston. And you are a boss woman, Definitely. a boss woman. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Until next time, love, peace, and unity. Mm -hmm.